Broadcasting to Soul Trent and the world. This is Six Towns Radio. Hello and welcome to Six Towns Radio with me, Ross Hancock, where today I'll be speaking to two lovely ladies who've made the transition from YouTube to the stage as they embark on a UK tour. Firstly, we'll be catching up with Bourbon Biscuit connoisseur Lauren Aquilina, followed by Chirpy Irish songstress Orla Gartland. The pair are in Manchester's sound control venue, supported by fellow Irish singer and competition winner Daryl Coyle. It's sure to be a fantastic gig. It's been a crazy couple of years for you, and an even crazier last couple of months. What's it been like when you've been getting ready to release Sinners? Um, it was just mental, especially because I was um, finishing my A-levels at the time, um, which was just a nightmare. Um, yeah, it's been really, really full on, especially this year, but I've enjoyed it, so. Yeah, and on that note, um, it's a really good EP, I've got to say that. Um, but what about the plans for the next couple of years? Um, yeah, next few months, um, a lot of writing, um, doing some recording. I'm uh, gonna hopefully going to release another EP in... January kind of time, February, that's the kind of aim. Um, whether that'll actually happen or not, or whether I'm yeah. a bit slow, <laughs> who knows. Um, but yeah, I do want to do another EP before I start working on the record. Um, we're talking to labels and stuff at the yeah. moment, which is all very political <laughs> and very scary and very yeah. boring, and I'm a bit kind of don't really know what's going on. I just trust my <laughs> manager's instincts. But um, yeah, it's kind of a bit complicated at the moment, so we're sort of in that transition phase. Yeah. And then, yeah, another EP, and then hopefully start working on an album. Yeah, and like I say, it's been a pretty hectic couple of months. And um, heading headlining Redden and Leeds, and going to New York. What were those two like? Yeah, well, I wasn't exactly headlining the whole of Reading and <laughs> no, Leeds. No, not the whole, the whole no. <laughs> but, but he- headlining the, the introducing stage. stage yeah. yeah, that was just mental, especially Reading. Um, just to you know, to have my manager actually gave me the talk before I went on. He was like, "Look, Lauren." you know, you're not the kind of act that normally plays at Reading and Leeds. There was a strong chance you could get bottled off. <laughs> um, he really prepared me for the worst. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, okay. Um, so I went on and then to see like 600, 700 people there, especially whilst Green Day were on, who were like the main headliner, <laughs> it was just insane. And they sang back all the words. It was just really nice. And the same with New York, actually. Just, just never expected to be able to sell out a venue in New York. Um, and to have people come from like Canada um, and travel like eight hours, just again, just crazy, but in a good way. Good way. <laughs> like you've alluded to, you've been doing your A levels uh, whilst releasing Sinners. Mm-hmm. Um, is it being a choice between music and education, or do you think you can do both? It's really difficult to do both. I'll be honest. I mean, I really, really struggled. Um, I was quite academic a long time ago um, when I did my GCSEs, um, but then because music became such a factor in my life, I think if you're going to do music properly, you have to give it 100%, which is what I did, yeah. and um, I had about 30% attendance at school. Um, I, my levels were actually okay. Uh, I got into my first choice uni, which I was really happy about, yeah. but it is really difficult, so I do think you have to find that balance and you have to know that you're not going to be able to do as well in each of them as you could do if you're just doing them on their own. Yeah. Um, so are you off to uni or are you deferring or? I've deferred my entry for a year um, yeah. and we'll see what happens. Um, if I can carry on doing this this time next year then I'd absolutely love to. Um, if not then I might I might not even go to uni still, I might just do something else, who knows. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll get to make that decision next year so I'm in quite a strong position. And you look back, did you ever think you'd ever make it from singing in your bedroom to stages like this tonight in Red and Leeds in New York? Did you ever think that you'd be here? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, I mean, just just really, really strange. The fact that, um, for example, Falls I wrote when I was 16, and I literally had no intentions of doing anything but a song. I just wrote it because it was what I was feeling at the time. That's what I do, because I'm sad and <laughs> emotional and like that. Um, and I sent it to my manager and he said, you know what, let's make an EP and everyone might hate it, but at least you've put some music out and we were like, okay, we just didn't expect anything just to, to now, I mean, um, to have a sold out headline tour and we've played Reading and Leeds and played a sold out show in New York, just, yeah, just never thought that was going to happen. Who, who do you thank for being here today and who do you look up to musically? Musically? Um, People, people that I saw doing it by themselves, there are a lot of people at the moment, it's become kind of a thing, like you don't have to have a record label anymore um, to get a top 40 single, to get um, a top, top 5 in the iTunes chart. And I watched um, quite a few musicians do that who I've now become friends with. 
So they, they inspired me. Um, and then musically, I was influenced a lot by Ellie Goulding, Bonnie Iver, Coldplay, Stereophonics, all the stuff I grew up with. Like I even grew up with like 90s house music. All, that, all, my, all the kind of synths in yeah. my music have come from that. And then just, just like normal people, like, you know, it sounds really sad, but my mum always actually supported my decision to do music um, and let me do that, um, which is, you know, great, because some parents would have been like, no, you've got to stay in school. Um, and, you know, my manager found me when I was 15 and had about six views on YouTube, and he thought that he could make something out of it. Um, and he'd never managed anyone before, and he took a risk and quit his job and stuff, so I have him to thank for. Yeah. Just, just, he was the first person that actually told me that I could do this, so... So yeah, a few people. Yeah, and finally on the competition winner, uh, Daryl Coyle. Where did the idea come from for the competition? What what made him stand out from the others? He's covered sinners, and he just did like a really original, chilled out guitar vocal version of it, um, which I really liked. And uh, and I'd seen some of his stuff before actually. That I'd been a, I'd been a fan of his originals before. So that for him to cover one of my songs was almost like quite an honour for me to see yeah. that. Um, fact that he looks up to me and stuff so um yeah it's, it's really cool he's actually flown in from ireland he told he entered for the manchester show because he was at he was at uni in manchester or something but then yeah. he ended up being back in ireland and he's had to <laughs> fly over especially i feel terrible um but yeah i'm looking forward to watching him tonight Paula, welcome how are you feeling about the tour really good thank you yeah i'm loving it. it's only the second date so it's hard to know but i'm really loving it so far what, what i want to know is how you've gone from youtube to the stage like what's the journey been like for you it's been really good. It's been like kind of unexpected. I know everyone says that, you don't really expect it, but it kind of, when I started putting up videos at first, I definitely never really saw it coming to this point. And it's kind of been to YouTube that I met my manager and I started coming over to the UK in the first place because before I was just doing really small gigs or like around Dublin, um, which was kind of tricky because I was, I was young enough, like, and, and the way the gigging scene works in Dublin is that it's mainly like pubs and stuff. So it has like, it kind of 15 16 year old trying to get gigs it was it was kind of tricky um but yeah that was that was a really good moment it started coming over here and and i know sort of doing this and it's, it's really good fun <laughs> what have the next few months got in store for you because i hear you've been recording an ep yeah it was in london i've just finished that it's all submitted to itunes and everything now finally yeah. which is such a satisfying feeling <laughs> yeah so i was kind of doing that i was writing it and kind of that sort of writing process i suppose was sort of dragged out over a while kind of on my own request sort of because I was kind of very keen to sort of nail the sort of sound that yeah. I wanted because I know a lot of people obviously the EP thing allows for like some development as you go along so you can like you know kind of feel your way as you go along but I kind of wanted to I suppose since I left it so long between releases I kind of wanted to make more of a statement and just say like kind of come out with something that was maybe a little bit more daring but also a bit more like this is what I'm about so I had to kind of figure out what that was first so yeah. It, yeah it took a while and I kind of wrote a lot of songs that I really didn't like and then some that I really did um, but it's all done and yeah and over the next sort of few weeks kind of starting looking at rolling it out slowly yeah. but surely which is going to be really cool so can you release any details about it any names any details yeah it's called Roots it, yeah. Roots is the title track so Roots EP is a kind of EP title as a bundle um, there's four tracks and we just shot the music video in Manchester actually oh, yeah. uh, this week so I've been in Manchester like three <laughs> times over the last week I don't really know yeah. how that happened but I'm a bit of a local now yeah. <laughs> What sort of music do you listen to personally? Sort of what's on your iPod? I like a lot of Regina Spector like probably like her a little bit too much to the extent <laughs> that like influence wise she's probably my number one um, I listen to a bit of folky stuff as well I really like Lauren Marling I like a lot of kind of more of the left field sort of pop. I listen to a lot of Imogen Heap as well. Um, so they'd be my number three, my, yeah. my top three, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, I listen to a lot of bands and everything as well, trying to scope it out. A lot of Bonnie Iver, a lot of kind of different stuff. It's a bit of a mixed bag, really. Yeah. Um, who'd be sort of your perfect collaboration then? Ooh, I really like Imogen Heap. Like, I'd love to write with. I actually, writing wise, collaboration, I think Regina Spector. Yeah. Um, she just. Like, she, her, her first album and her last album, like her latest, were my favourites. And there was like a few in the middle that. They were okay, but it wasn't their first and last. And I kind of had drifted out of love with her during yeah. the middle stages. And then she released the latest one, and I was like, yes, oh my god, <laughs> she's back. I love this woman. She um, she played in Dublin and I was over here. I think I missed her by one day with my flight and I was yeah. just raging. So riding wise, <laughs> it would be Regina, but production wise, 
I'd love to uh, work with Imogen Heap because yeah. she produces all her own stuff and it's so weird and I just I think <laughs> she's so out of the box and cool. Yeah. Yourself and Lauren are two young singer songwriters, but there's a lot out there at the moment. Um, people like Gabby Applin obviously have made it. Is she someone that you'd like to emulate? Someone you can look up to, like she's released the album, she's made it. Do you think you can emulate her? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's really, it's really exciting and cool because I'm really good friends with Gabrielle, obviously really good friends with Lauren. And there's kind of this sort of circle that I've ended up kind of stumbling into in this like really amazing way. I, I really just don't know how it happened and everyone's just really tight and like a lot of people say, oh, there must be some element of competition between you all. But honestly, it's just more like everyone's helps each other out. Yeah. You know, I've supported Gabrielle. Um, I've supported Lauren now. There's two lads called Hudson Taylor that are kind of yeah. uh, the, the two kind of Irish guys. That's sort of how I know everyone really, um, and I've supported them. So it's a really there's a huge element of everyone kind of helping each other out, which is yeah. great. But definitely, I mean, album wise, I mean, it'll be quite a while before I'll be looking at that. I mean, I have to get the EP at least one over with first. But maybe, I mean, definitely like in a year, year and a half time, sort of, you know, maybe looking at doing that and seeing how it all pans out and I like yeah you know I definitely see myself doing a few EPs and definitely kind of like I said you know there's a bit of natural development yeah. there I think which I really like in particular about Gabrielle's kind of musical journey it's really nice seeing it all progress along yeah. and getting slowly and slowly bigger and slowly and fuller and a little bit more towards the album and you know that'd be you know in that sense it'd be that'd be a great thing I'd be I'd be really kind of honoured to to have that kind of development my, myself with my own music. It's, it's been a pretty similar journey, really, hasn't it? Because she's gone from YouTube videos. Yeah. The it, yeah. It's really, it's really, it's really amazing how people can make that thing. And I think you know, YouTube for me personally has been this incredible tool, and I absolutely appreciate it for everything you know that it is for me because. Um, you know, for the last year I was in Dublin doing my exams, like the equivalent of my A-levels yeah. and I was a bit of a nerd and I kind of didn't do that much music stuff but the thing that I could do constantly was, you know, film stuff in my room and put them up and, you know, it's, it's one of those things I think if you stop and think about how amazing that is that you can put up one of your own songs or a cover and have someone on the other side of the world give you like almost instantaneous feedback. Yeah. It really is a really cool thing and I think it's amazing but at the same time I've also kind of seen sort of cases where it can become a bit of a novelty and you kind of I think it's it's something to be treated carefully as well as I really appreciate it being the tool that it is I think you know it's really important to kind of put across to, to people that listen to your music that you are a real musician and not a YouTube musician yeah. which is not you know not a bad label in any case but for me personally not really you know the label that I'd like to have and kind of you kind of trying to put across to people that you know in terms of gigging, in terms of recording and writing with other people, the sort of all-rounded music experience that you are doing that as well. Yeah. Without, at the same time, I'd never want to abandon it completely. I think you have to you have to keep your humble roots, and you need to, you know, keep sort of giving back and interacting with people that have been there from the very start. So that kind of balance is something that you know I'm going to be keeping an eye on and, and trying to get right, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. And you mentioned exams. How, how's it? How do you cope with having all these exams whilst you're trying to get all this music out? Is it quite difficult to concentrate on one rather than the other? Or Yeah, it really was during the year. I lo I've finished now, luckily. I did literally uh, June 13th with my last exam, June 19th I was on a plane to <laughs> London. So it was kind of, during the year now, it was definitely a bit of a, a, bit of a seesaw and I kind of... I suppose I wanted I wanted to do I'm really kind of stubborn in the sense I wanted to do well for the sake of it like I yeah. you know I'm taking a gap year at least one anyway to feel out the music and see how that goes so people were like why are you trying to work for your exams but it was more as well to keep my parents happy and everything so it was a bit of a juggling actor in the year but yeah. luckily you know luckily it's just all music now <laughs> and finally you've alluded to it so what are your goals for 2014 my goals. That's really strange that that's next year, isn't it? Oh my god, it seems really like futuristic. I just remember hearing like in about 2008. I remember oh someone going, oh my god, the Olympics are in 2012, and I was like, that is never going to come around. Um, my goals for 2014. Well, get the EP out, even though that's this year. But hopefully, kind of hopefully see people kind of enjoying that. Um, I kind of got my fingers crossed that everyone that knows my music so far will be liking it because it is kind yeah. of different not mad mad different but it's definitely you know a risk and I think I'd rather take a risk than go with something safe but there's always that you know worry that people might not react so well so I'm hoping people will sort of take to it and um, hoping to go on a headline tour as well my second one so I went on one um, in July it was just like a small sort of five date one yeah. and the Manchester one was in this venue so I kind of know it quite well 
and uh, and yeah, hopefully doing another one. I think in February, hopefully doing that sort of tying in with the release yeah. um, later in the year this year, and then yeah, EP number two finishing off. I have a few songs in mind, so it's kind of one of those things where you hold a few back and stuff like that. So finish that off, and hopefully just there's a few writers you know in London that I'd love to write with. So hopefully you know hopefully they'd be interested. That'd be great. <laughs>